concept to imagine, but here's an extremely oversimplified example. Envision a candle, if you will. If you light a can second candle from the first candle, the flame does not change. Then light a third candle from the second. Again, the flame on the first and second candles doesn't change. Now put the flames together, and once again you have one flame. Same flame, but three different parts. This is what a very human way to explain what the Trinity is. All there, Creator, the Christ, and the Comforter. If the Spirit is in us, Christ is in us. He dwells in the heart by faith. Grace in the soul is its new nature. The soul is alive with God in us and begins its holy happiness which shall endure forever. And I'm in this passage in Romans, Paul refers to an obligation of the Spirit. Obligations, we all have them, to our partner, to our parents and children, to our job, to our creditors. But that's not the kind of obligation Paul is referring to here. The obligations Paul refers to are not of a worldly dimension, but of a godly dimension. The Holy Spirit enters us when we decide to give our life to Christ. To become a Christian, but we need to continually ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us do the things God wants us to do. When we're growing as Christians, we should allow the Spirit to take control over more and more areas of our lives. Two weeks ago I spoke about the trappings of material stuff, the lure of power, greed, resentments, and lust, the temptation of the world. Paul goes on to say, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves. It's okay to have stuff, to move up in position at your job, to make more money, to make love. It's okay to have fun. But when that becomes your primary focus in life, when you become obsessed with these things, when you engage someone out of lust instead of love, that's what we, Paul is referring to here when he says to live according to the flesh. We alienate the spirit when we move away God, from God's will for us. Through renewal of the spirit within us and to follow the ways of the living Christ is like how we achieve the inheritance of God. We all face challenges in life. We become weak and depressed. And it's, that is a time of renewal where we must turn to the Spirit to help guide us to change our attitudes towards life. Through rebirth of our spirit and our eyes open to the principles of God, where we will one day be with Christ, every time we face challenges in life and walk through them, we strengthen our spirit, we strengthen our faith, we can look at how God wants us to cleanse our minds of worldly thoughts and open our minds to investigate and accept the ways of God. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, we are all children of God. God says that those who have received spirit are children of God. Paul says, goes on to say, we are co-heirs with Christ if we indeed share in his sufferings. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you go out and get flogged or wear a crown of thorns. Hmm. I'm suggesting that we make sacrifices in our worldly life to take in consideration of other well-being as well as our own. Jesus went often out of his way to help those when he, even when he faced ridicule, ridicule and ultimately his human existence. We have to go beyond worldly obsessions and move into the spirit. Instead of buying that second latte at the coffee shop, why not donate that money to the poor? Or give it to your church instead? Or maybe you have some free time. 
Why not spend some time picking someone up who needs to get to the store or bring them here to church because they can't get here on their own accord? I personally recently decided to do donate most of the lay delegate expenses out of my own pocket. Not because I wanted to, I mean, not because I had to, but because the Spirit moved me to do that. That's the kind of sacrifices Paul is referring to here when he says we must make sacrifices. When we make those sacrifices, when we allow the Spirit to move us to follow the ways of Christ, we share the love of God that ha has for each of us. Doing acts of kindness to others, especially those we do not know. This is how we do God's work. This is how we become heirs of God. So you see, it takes all three together to fully realize God. You cannot have one without the other. It takes all of us together to be moved by the Spirit to spread the good news of God. For there are many who do not know God's love. Too many people for just one or two of us. The Spirit, and just as the disciples did 2,000 years ago when they followed the ways of Christ, and the Spirit came upon them. That's the same kind of thing we are called to do today. Pride is coming up, and it's a time for us to show our colors and say, yes, I'm an LGBTQI Christian, and God loves me for who I am. And more importantly, to share that love to everyone we meet. There will be many looking for love, compassion, and fellowship. There will be LGBTQI people at the parade and at the festival who think God doesn't love them. Whether it was rejection by their parents, their friends, or the church, we have to set the record straight. Pardon the pun. <laughs> to let them know God's love for them, and they are not alone. Together, moved by the Spirit, delivering the message of Christ, we can make a difference. Together, we can transform ourselves as we transform the world. Together, we can be MCC. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.